So it's pretty simplistic. And to open it up, we'll show you that next. It's on a hydraulic assist. So up it goes like this to get into the kind of the section of cleaning it. So all stainless steel. This compartment here is recirculating water. And the water here is, is again, it's the low volume, high pressure water. So this is what we would call the water that does the pre-soaking. The things that sort of first as a product enters, it gets soaked. So I'll show you the mechanisms here behind, since it's it's gonna it's dirty water running through here. They've engineered some some screen systems in here and some I call them weirs, basically small dams to trap sediment. So um, because the pump at the bottom will pick up the water and then it dries it draws it back up over and then sprays the crops in sort of a pre-soaking mode. So it has this larger screen here, captures bigger things down here. This smaller mesh screen, all stainless steel. And this is where the this is where the pump would enter, draw the water in. This is the drain port here, and then it has these sort of, I guess I call them some kind of a dam. Baffle, thank you. That's the word. These are designed to sort of slow down some of the sediments. And um, when we have a sandy loam soil here on the farm, and as I've cleaned it. We, last week, we, this week, we did a lot of gruesome artichokes, about 500 pounds. And they came out of the field pretty much. We did pre-soak them just to kind of get a little bit of the soil off, but they're, they're pretty pretty wet. And when I ran it through on this thing, what I did notice is that most of the sediment builds up here, just as these things are designed to do. And then the water coming through here is essentially, it's, it's muddy, but it's not full of debris. But um, the, the point to all that is it's, it's pretty straightforward to clean. And so what we found was that at the end of washing it, we just pull the screens out, pull the, these uh, baffles out, wash it out. You could spray it down with a sanitizer if you felt like you needed to do that. And then, and then you're basically done. How, do, how long do you say it takes you to do a full clean? I'm on sandy soil, so I don't have a lot of residual mud buildup, and I used, tend to flush the water. I would say to kind of rinse the whole thing down, there's a piece up front, I'll, I'll show you that too, that slides out, kind of a tray. I would say no more than 10 minutes tops clean it. Now that doesn't mean polishing the whole thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, and there's no grease fittings on it. It's, it's they're sealed bearings, and so the idea that it would just doesn't take a whole lot of time. This is basically rinse it out, that's all I need to do. So as, the, as you fill this thing up, this is the overflow valve here. So water, if, at some point you reach enough high level of water in here, it doesn't overflow the sides here. It overflows this baffle into this drain here and, and drains on out. So, um, and the thing to remember too, since this is a contains amount of water, you fill it up initially, but since I'm also running the high pressure water, I'm at, and the rinse, I'm adding in a, approximately another 20 or more gallons per minute. So, and that's all coming down to this basin. So there's a lot of water moving through this. And so at some point, this begins to overflow out and down because I'm, I'm, I'm putting a lot of fresh water back into the system. Um, and, and periodically, I'll show you too, we, 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 I might help, help it out, I might drain it a little bit as we're operating it to pull off some of the soil. But, oh, one thing else I wanted to show you here. So you, I mentioned that there were those, and there's spinning high pressure nozzles on the bottom on the, uh, of that conveyor as well. And you can see from over here, this is the spinning assembly here. And you can also get to the, this is the rinse line here, the freshwater rinse. So freshwater rinse hooked to this hose, top and bottom, high pressure coming through this, through this high pressure line here. And I wanted to point out this, the pitch on these is adjustable, so the, this thing rotates, and so we're still fooling around with how it tilts a little bit, because that changes the speed at which this thing rotates. And so, I, I don't know what the right answer is, but I'm sort of figuring out that maybe too fast is not the right, maybe too slow is not right, so fig, still tweaking that. Um, and since it, you know, it's, they don't, they don't come with a, a user's manual. <laughs> <laughs>
because I offered to write one, and they said, "Oh no, we like to have people call us and tell us what they, you know, and then we can answer them." So, one of the things I learned right from the beginning was um, you have to fill this thing up quite a ways to, to to get a head pressure on the recirculation pump. I called them uh -huh. up. I said, "I can't get this thing to prime. How much water you have in it?" No, it's covered it down here. That's not enough. Okay. So once you fill it up, then you know it's kind of one of those things. Okay, I got it. But that'd be kind of nice to know up front. But uh, I, one thing I will tell you, I, I've learned about this in a couple weeks we've had it, is everything seems to be off the shelf parts. So you know the spray nozzles would come from a, a standard supply house. Um, most of the stuff seems to be very, very common, commonly available. So I like that. It's no real specific pieces of equipment that I can tell right now that you couldn't need to get, whether it's bolts or, or pump assembly. For instance, on the circulation pump, this, I drain it out because it's cold here in the winter. And so I, I went to my local um, supply house and they had the drain plug because I, I, I knew it would just be a matter of time for some one of us, probably me, would lose <laughs> the thing. So I got a spare one right here. You know, Perfect. But, but the guy's like, yeah, what pump is that off of? And I said, oh, I got those right here. So that's cool. So this is the only brush on the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> is right here. Um, so I do I do rinse at the end. You know I, the you can see the chain. I the conveyor. I get in there and spray it down with this water pressure to clean it out. But I don't think there's a whole lot of nooks and crannies. But we're still looking at it. Then I mentioned earlier. On the front end here, this little shelf is an optional piece. Um, so I thought, well, that makes sense. You know, I put the crates here, kind of load it up. It was a little higher than I wanted to because, but my table's on casters, so I needed to get this higher. And so we may modify the table to lower, literally a little bit lower down. But right here is a is a plate that slides out. You have to remove these bolts. This takes a second to take this tray off, and then. But then this plate comes out, and what happens? Little pieces of debris that get, you know, carrots and things, and it falls down. You just take that tray out and just knock it off, and it cleans up pretty well. Did it come with the casters on it? Like that's an option. That's an option. Yeah. As you can see, my packing facility is not very large. I wanted to build, Billy to move this thing in and out of the mm -hmm. way. I got I got a sorting table with it too, so I needed to be able to. I wanted the table on casters too, so. To get, and they're all the way to the bottom, but in order to be able to make the clearance here, yeah, I had to get this machine a little bit higher. So, one of the things I'm considering doing is, is shortening this, the legs on this table, because those casters are three inches tall, I think. To get it's a little bit higher than I want it to be, so I just have to take it to the shop and cut it and re-weld it and drop it down. And then I can lower this whole machine too as well, a little bit lower. Do the same. And my constraint here was to make sure I can clear this table as it rotates around. So I was going to show you down here. So this is the this is the pump. This is the high pressure pump here. So this is the gauge here. This is the adjustable gauge on this thing. Um, it does have a cutout. So if it, the pressure drops off the thing, it'll it'll quit pumping and save the the motor, save the pump assemblies. So you don't burn it up. Um, and so. As I said, it's, the manufacturer says between 800 and 1,000 PSI. I, I've noticed that if I just run this thing full of enough water, I can get it almost to 1,500, which is a lot of water pressure, um, which is kind of neat, because I think that's what the pump's rated for. But that's how you adjust it right here. The hookups on that end is a small filter. I haven't experienced any problems. We're running off our well. It's not filtered water. Um, there's a small screen there. And then a pretty big motor. In 240 single phase, uh, three horsepower motor. It's a little on the noisy side. I, I was thinking that maybe hanging some insulating material, some, maybe like the curtains, would have cut some of the noise down a little bit. Yeah. It's kind of one of those you know projects that we have to. Farmers never. Ending. This is where the high pressure water hooks up. I put quick disconnect on it. That's good. Yeah. And this is the the recirculating pump assembly here. Again, you fill it up and it just recircles. And this is a, a pacer pump, which is a just a regular off-the-shelf available pump, which is kind of neat. 
I took it apart because I couldn't get to prime. They didn't want to end up water, and I thought something's not right. And I opened it up. And there's nothing to it. <laughs> it's really simple. <laughs> the hardest part was getting the hoses connected. And there's a tip for that if you work with this high pressure hose. Hot water. <laughs> Stick it in a hot water in a pot of hot water, and then it'll slide on and off like butter. These are the drains for the low pressure side. There's one inside, there's one outside. So if this is cold weather, we open it all up and let it air out.